This is the brand new Surface Pro 6 and this is a truly unique device in every single way. So ever since 2014, when I first got my MacBook Air, my secondary portable laptop, I've been looking for something, some device, any device that could replace both my 12-inch MacBook, uh, which I've been using since 2015, as well as my iPad Pro, and I finally found it. So this is my full in-depth review of the Microsoft Surface Pro 6 after many, many days of use, more than a month actually, so I'll be covering the design, the build quality, the display, keyboard, trackpad, performance, software, battery life, special features, issues. So yeah, you'll definitely need that popcorn for this video. Get some drinks as well, hashtag stay hydrated kids and enjoy. Okay, so the reason why the Surface Pro 6 is so unique is because it's not trying to be a tablet, but then it's not trying to be a laptop either. It's actually in the middle of that spectrum. Uh, by the way, it does work better as a laptop than as a tablet. So let's start off with the design. The Surface Pro 6 is literally just the tablet. I mean, yes, you do have that keyboard cover, which I'll get to in a second, but the device itself is just this 13 inch slab of metal. And it does look really, really good. The only design difference from the Surface Pro 5 is that the 6 now comes in black. And wow, this has to be the best color on any laptop that I've seen. It looks incredibly slick and professional. And I really think that all laptops should be adopting something like this, this color, especially Apple. Space gray is cool, but the black is just just much, much better. It's 771 grams, which compared to 12.9 inches iPad Pro's uh, 633 grams, yes, it is definitely not the lightest tablet on the market. So yeah, using this with one hand, I'm not saying that it's hard or heavy, but it's just not as comfortable as something that's just a tablet. But a 12 inch MacBook, for example, is 920 grams. So the Surface Pro 6 is basically in between a tablet and a small lightweight laptop in terms of its size and weight. Now, what I absolutely love about the Surface Pro 6 is this kickstand built in. This is by far something that every single tablet should have. So the kickstand can be adjusted at pretty much any angle you want. You can even lay it flat on the desk if you want to do some drawing. For me, for example, I use this to do uh, both Google Suite work, a bit of Photoshop as well as watching videos. So having that stand is a massive plus because I can just undock the keyboard, I can take it as a tablet anywhere I wish and I can put it down however I want thanks to that built-in kickstand. So absolutely love this kickstand. Now, I know, design-wise, it doesn't look as good as something like a proper laptop, the Surface Laptop 2, which looks incredible, so don't you don't get the laptop feel, but that's not really an issue for me, since what I need from this device is not a main laptop, I already have my 2018 MacBook Pro for that, uh, but a secondary laptop that's also a tablet that I can take anywhere I want, that replaces it with my 12-inch MacBook and the iPad Pro, and for me, the Surface Pro 6 simply excels at that. Now, a good design doesn't necessarily mean that the build quality is also good. So, for example, my 2016 MacBook Pro had an amazing design, but one of the worst build qualities that I've ever seen on any device, I'm not even joking, I've had to replace it three times due to many, many issues that I've had with it, popping noise issues, keyboard issues, display issues, GPU, and many, many more. Now, in terms of the Surface Pro 6, it does feel very solid, and there's also no screws on the bottom or literally anywhere, so it feels good, but it's not perfect at all. For example, my unit had a scuffed kickstand and the paint job was so bad that I could literally peel it off with my fingernail. This is even worse than the black iPhone 5, which had the famous scratch gate issue. Honestly, I haven't seen a paint job on a tech device that was worse than this, and I've seen a lot a lot of tech devices. Also, I really don't know what happened and how this happened, but the back of my Surface Pro 6 got a massive scratch that I cannot remove. So combine this with the dead pixels on the display that I also have, and yeah, it doesn't look that good for Microsoft. Now, leaving those dead pixels aside, which yes, do suck, how good is the actual display? Well, actually, pretty good. So it's a 12.3 inch 2736 by 1824 resolution display, 100% sRGB color space. It's also a three by two aspect ratio panel. So the same as the iPad Pros. And realistically, this is actually a pretty good, a good panel. Colors are vibrant, blacks are, well, you know, considering that this is an LCD display, they're good. I mean, for a Windows display, this has one of the best displays that I've seen. Not the best one, uh, but one of the best. Dell, the Dell XPSs have a much better display than this one and the MacBook Pros as well. But if you do plan on doing video editing or even photo editing on this, it's a great panel nonetheless. And it's also a touchscreen, supports up to 10 fingers max. 
Now, unfortunately, Microsoft's touch recognition is still pretty bad. I'll be covering this more in depth in the software section of this video. Moving on to the keyboard and the trackpad, the keyboard, even though it's a cover similar to the iPad Pro's keyboard that you just fold and unfold, it is amazing. Like really, really, really good. Like literally, it doesn't even compare to the iPad Pro's keyboard cover, or even when compared to the MacBook Pro's actual built-in keyboard, this thin cover has actual keys with actual key travel. So I was surprised to see how good it feels to type on this. It's also a backlit keyboard, by the way, and it also features full function keys, which again, something uh, like the iPad Pro's smart cover does not. And also it does come with a trackpad as well, which is also clickable. So yeah, I'm really, really impressed so far with the keyboard and the trackpad. Now, my only complaints with a keyboard is that uh, one, you know, it doesn't come built in or bundled inside a box. That would be awesome, but it doesn't. You have to buy it separately. And at 100 pounds or even more than that, if you decide to go for the Al Alcantara keyboard, which does give you a built in fingerprint reader, that's cool uh, but yeah the price does go up and then number two I just wish that the trackpad was a bit larger because yes it is quite tiny especially if you're coming from something like a MacBook Pro now the performance is okay so my model comes with the 8th generation Intel i5 8250U processor, it's a quad-core chip, 1.6 GHz and it can turbo up to 3.4. You also get 8 GB of RAM as well as 256 GB of NVMe SSD in my model. Now since this is Windows, you have multiple battery and performance modes. So if you put this into the best performance, then it's great, everything is very snappy. However, if you put it in the recommended mode, it's going to feel slow. And laggy. So I do recommend using this in best performance, but in terms of the actual usability, yes, the Surface Pro 6 is a full computer and it can easily handle Photoshop, even video editing. If you plan on doing some light video editing in Premiere Pro, you can actually do that. Now, I wouldn't really do any gaming on this since, you know, it comes with the Intel UHD Graphics 620. So yeah, definitely not made for gaming. But like I said, if you want to do some light video editing, some photo editing as well, it can easily handle that alongside real time 4K video playback on YouTube, as well as Netflix. So now let's talk about the software. The Surface Pro 6 comes with full Windows 10, Windows 10 Home or even Pro if you decide to go with that. And that's just incredible. This is the best part about a Surface Pro 6. Second one would be the kickstand. So compare this to the iPad Pro and the difference is just night and day. The fact that a Pro 6 runs full Windows means that you can indeed run full desktop apps on this, pretty much any Windows app that you can think of, it can indeed be run on the Surface Pro 6. So yeah, no baby browser, no baby apps, just the full desktop experience in something that's 13 inches in size and can be put into a tiny backpack. So that's great, but it's not perfect. I have some complaints with the software because um, yeah, you know, it's Windows and it has quite a few issues. So I've encountered a ton of bugs, including bugs where my battery icon disappeared completely. My brightness indicator was not visible anymore. And speaking of this, why do we have a 25% brightness increased toggle rather than an actual slider? And then finally, accidental touch rejection on Windows is just really, really bad. I mean, it's pretty much up to the point where it's non-existent and touch recognition in Windows is pretty bad as well. So for example, on YouTube, a lot of the times when I was just scrolling through the videos, the Surface Pro 6 would just open up a random video since it thought that I clicked it when I was just scrolling through the videos and you know, things like that. Moving on to the battery life, Microsoft claims 13.5 hours, which to be honest, I never got. Now I got probably around six to seven hours at most, but I was using a bit of Photoshop, Google Suite. So yeah, the battery life would depend on each user's workflow. Also, I was using this in recommended mode most of the time. So if you use it in battery saver or best performance, you would have some completely different results than me. So overall, pretty good battery life. Moving on to the special features, probably the biggest one is the Surface Pen. So same as with a keyboard, you do have to buy this one separately. It costs a hundred pounds. So yeah, it's, it's not cheap, but it does cost less than the Apple Pencil, the second generation one, which is pretty good. However, the Apple Pencil is better in every single way. The Surface Pencil is basically based on a Wacom Tech, so it's pretty much a basic stylus that only uses the battery and Bluetooth to make the top and side buttons work, and that's pretty much it. You don't need batteries for the actual stylus itself to work. The best part about it is that it attaches magnetically to the Surface, which Apple has only introduced with a second generation Apple Pencil. The Surface has had this for many, many years now, and yeah, it just works really, really well. Even in Photoshop, by the way, Palm rejection kicks in right when the pen is on the display, so you don't have to worry about accidental interactions with your palm, which, I mean, so far I haven't had any issues with this. And then if you're a graphic designer, the Surface Pro 6 is far better than a MacBook Pro, since you have a touchscreen as well as a built-in pen, and it's also better than the iPad Pro, since it can run full the full version of Photoshop, uh, plus it supports all the keyboard shortcuts, and you have a trackpad as well, so pretty much the entire package.
And then the second special feature is that uh, you do have a micro SD card <laughs> hidden underneath the uh, the kickstand. So if you want to extend the internal storage even more without adding a USB drive, you can you can easily do that. Okay, so I've talked about the main idea behind the Surface Pro 6, all the chapters I wanted to cover, display, specs, uh, performance, battery life, and that kind of stuff. So what are the main downsides of the Surface Pro 6? Well, apart from the downsides that I've covered in every single section, the biggest one by far is in terms of the ports. So we do get a headphone jack, we do get the proprietary Microsoft Surface charging port, which is magnetic and resembles the MagSafe that Apple had on the old MacBooks a lot. And I do love this, by the way. But what I don't like is that while we do get USB, uh, USB Type-A port, which by the way is USB 3.0 instead of 3.1, really? Uh, we get a mini display port, and yeah, nothing else, literally nothing else. No USB Type-C, no Thunderbolt 3 in 2018. So here's the thing, guys. If this thing had USB Type-C, like pretty much every single 2018 and 2017 laptop, or smartphone, or 2-in-1 PC, uh, you would be able to easily connect USB Type-C docks and 4K monitors, but instead we have this old mini display port that no one even includes on their devices anymore. Also, the Surface Go, which is cheaper and was introduced before the Surface Pro 6, it does come with a USB Type-C port because logic. And even better, if this thing had Thunderbolt 3, you would have been able to connect to an external GPU like you can do with, I don't know, MacBook Air, the Dell XPS 13, and get a full GTX 2080 running on this thing and do some proper gaming, some advanced 3D modeling and video editing. But without that, picking up the Surface Pro 6 over something like, again, the Dell XPS 13 for pro users doesn't really make any sense. Okay, so in the end, what's my conclusion on all this? Well, what makes the Surface Pro 6 so unique is that it has the ability for it to be used anywhere and in any way you like. So that's its biggest advantage. So for people like me who need a secondary portable device that replaces both my 12-inch MacBook as well as my iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil, yes, this is actually the perfect device. There's nothing better than a Surface Pro 6 in this case. Also, for business users who want something extremely portable and again, flexible on the go, this is again, pretty much the perfect device. Graphic designers, Photoshop users, again, the perfect device, thanks to the excellent pen and full desktop uh, OS support that Microsoft Surface Pro 6 runs on. But for everyone else, video editors, gamers, 3D modelers, and more pro, pro users, this is not for you. And you probably knew this already. So yeah, overall, it's a pretty good device. I love it. And I already said goodbye to my 12-inch MacBook and my iPad Pro. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. I left the description links for everything in case you're interested in the Surface Pro 6 and the keyboard and, and so on. And don't forget to subscribe and notifications if you have enjoyed this video and you want to see more extremely in-depth tech videos like this one and in-depth reviews. Um, yeah, give us a like if you've enjoyed it. So let me know. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in the next video. So enough tech. Cheers.